Welcome to the first of the four squat tutorials this afternoon. Uh, fittingly, it's a, it's a tutorial on probability, one of the most basic measures or metric or variables in our field. Which of those it is, uh, you will soon be hearing. Armando Machado will explain what probability is, but I'd like to preempt that by suggesting it's one of five things. First of all, it's relative frequency, of course. You flip, what's the probability of flipping a coin uh, heads? If it's a fair coin, it's 0.5. How do you know? You flip it 100 times and you find it's fallen heads up 50 out of the 100. But that's not a probability, that's a count. You know exactly what happened on each trial. Probability is not there. Where is it? Maybe it's in the fact that you think it's going to, for the next 100 trials, do the same. That's not a probability either. It will or it won't. You're talking more about subjective beliefs. So maybe that's the second idea of what probability is. So uh, the, the strength of willingness to believe in things. And you do that by sampling scenarios. But if that's the case, everybody's got a different sense of the scenarios, a different inside information. That's why they handicap. So if all probabilities are subjective. There's no probability we can assign to events. That's not so good either. Well, maybe uh, probability is a measure of our ignorance, or ignorance of the controlling variables. If we knew what those variables were, we'd know what the outcome is. So it doesn't ma ma measure a phenomenon, it measures our ignorance. Well, that's a bit of a problem if you want to go ahead and do models with it. Maybe what it is is just a modeling system, a grammar or a logic of models that you can apply to things like coins, but we're lucky it applies to behavior too. Yes, it's certainly that, but maybe it's more than that. What I think probability is, it's the amount of surprise you don't show when something happens. And it's no surprise, it should come as no surprise, that there is no person who can better explain what I just said, plus a lot more about probability than Armando Machado, the expert of probability, the uh, president outgoing of Squab, and the person I defer to for the rest of the hour. Uh, if you have questions, great. If it's things you didn't hear or understand, please ask them. But if it's just elaborations, wait until the end of the uh, 45 minutes, and we'll have a lot of time for questions. Armando Machado. Thanks, Peter. OK. Um, this is an invitation to probability. Uh, what I'd like to do uh, is to um, illustrate a few techniques that I found very useful uh, in understanding some uh, problems of psychology I've applied. And they are sufficiently general uh, that they have uh, wide applicability and I'd like to, to, to talk about them. Uh, and I think this is best done by example. Um, probability is a few general principles and a lot of tricks. And so we need to understand a few principles and practice with the tricks. And, uh, um, Consider the following problem. In the jargon of probability um, textbooks, it's called the occupan occupancy problem. Suppose that you have uh, five distinct balls, three urns, three bags. When placing five different balls randomly into the three different urns, what's the probability that no urn is left empty? Well, uh, one way to compute this probability is to count the number of favorable cases. We have two examples here. No urn is empty, and we and count the number of total cases, which are which is the favorable plus the unfavorable, and we have an example of unfavorable case here. Well, this probability is 0 0.617. We will learn today how to compute this sort of probability. Here's another example: uh, so coupons in cereal boxes. This is a very favorite. It's almost in every introductory textbook on probability, for good reason. Um, as we will see at the end. Coupons in cereal boxes have words printed on them. With one coupon per box, how many boxes on the average are required to make a complete set? In this example, I have eight types of coupons. Each one has a word printed on it. And you need to get one of each to complete the sentence. And the sentence says you have just uh, won a trip to Mexico. Uh, now, you're buying them, you don't know what, which coupon is inside. On the average, how many boxes do you need to buy to get a full set? And the answer is 21.7. We will learn today how to do this. Uh, let's get a little bit closer to our field. Uh, 
consider the following situation. On each trial, a stat pigeon, it's a new breed of pigeons called Columba neuringia, uh, chooses eight times which of two keys to pack. For example, on trial one, this stat pigeon has chosen left, 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 and right, left, right, 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 right. We do it 50 times on one session, okay? And notice that some sequences are different, differ, some are repeats. Uh, and the question is, assuming random choices, what's the expected number of different sequences emitted during a 50 trial session? So, you look at these 50 sequences, some are repeats, some are unique, uh, and you ask how many different sequences are there? Uh, a measure, if you want, of the variability in the behavior. Well, based on computer simulations, Page and Euringer in 85 report 45 sequences, on the average, are distinct. Can we derive this number? We'll do that today. Um, let's change to a different situation. We have an eight-arm radial arm maze. On each trial, our stat rat chooses randomly one of the eight arms of the maze. This guy has no memory. Uh, so on each trial, uh, just uh, samples one of the eight arms randomly. One question that we can ask is, what is the mean number of trials needed to visit all eight arms? Okay? Um, here's a slightly different question. Now, notice that here, the number of trials may be 8, may be 9, may be 10. We're asking for the average number. Here is a different question. What is the mean number of different arms visited during 8 trials? Now we're fixing the trials. We'll say, okay, you have 8 chances. How many different arms? Alton and Schlossberg in 78 say in their paper it's 5.25 and they don't show how they got this number. We will learn today how to get this number, okay? And in the process, we'll enjoy this, I hope, and learn a few techniques. But first, I need to review, it's a sort of preliminary, setting the stage for what's coming up next. I need to review things that you probably learned uh, uh, in high school or first year of college. If you haven't applied, maybe you forgot. So let's uh, remember what combinations are. Uh, Suppose, so the first uh, three things I will do is to review three concepts. One is combinations. Suppose you have uh, five different balls. Uh, how many sets of three can you form? Uh, and the order of the balls is irrelevant. So, in this, more generally, if you have n balls and you, you want to form groups of k, how many can you form? Uh, notice that there is an important constraint. I'm considering this uh, yellow, red, and green, uh, all these permutations are considered the same thing. It's just the order that uh, is changing, and I don't want to count this as six. This counts as one. Given that, uh, how many cases can I, um, can I have? And this number is combinations of n, k at a time, and uh, it has this formula, n factorial. This means n times n minus one times n minus two and down to one, okay? Uh, divided by n minus k factorial, k factorial. Um, so in this case, we have five balls, three at a time. So you plug the numbers, and then when you do the math, you get to 10. Okay? So this is just to refresh the memory. The other thing I want to refresh our memory is the concept of average or expectation. Uh, to illustrate that, imagine that uh, you have an honest coin, you flip the coin, probability of heads is one half, tails one half. Now let's say you flip it three times, and you are interested in the total number of heads at the end of the third flip. Well, you see that this number can vary. So we call this number x, and x is a random variable. Two things are important for a random variable. You need to know which numbers can it take. Well, in this case, well, it can take zero can be zero, the outcomes were all tails, can be one, can be two, or can be three. This is the domain of the random variable. The other thing is, for each one of these numbers, zero, one, what's the probability of getting that? Well, um, in this case, for example, it's just one half times one half times one half would be one eighth. Now, given the domain, the number of possible values, the possible values that a random variable can take and the probability of each one, we find its expectation or mean or the average value. And the formula to remind you, you just grab the number that